Hello, beautiful. My name is Aoife and I am a transformational health coach for highly sensitive women. I help highly sensitive women to heal themselves from chronic pain, chronic illness, anxiety, and depression using mind-body techniques. And this all comes from my own direct experience. I was really sick as a child. I had all kinds of mysterious, unexplained symptoms and incurable diagnosis. Despite having access to the best healthcare alternative therapies, I found myself in my early 30s sicker than ever, suicidal, on disability benefits, unable to work, and it was a very scary place to be. When I found the mind-body connection, everything made sense to me and I began healing rapidly. So what I want to share with you today is specifically how I healed food triggers, because one of my most debilitating symptoms was IBS. So from a very young age, when I complained about stomach pain and had a lot of candida, the, the game of whack-a-mole really began in terms of looking for the food that was bad and causing the problems and searching for the food that was good and wouldn't cause problems. And this was a massive theme throughout my whole life. Um, and when I began to take on my own healing in my mid twenties, I really went all in on this theory you know, I I wasn't really given much other choice. There was no conventional roadmap to healing my fibromyalgia, IBS, carpal tunnel, bladder syndrome, acne. The conventional stuff wasn't really working. And so I was left to my own devices and the natural place to go and where there was a lot of information was food. So I started to do the GAPS diet, um, keto diet, uh, juice fasting, cleaning up all of my oils, everything going super clean and just obsessing over food and obsessing over the idea that I could heal my gut and heal the gut health and that that would stop the pain and the suffering and heal my body and that it would get me to a point of resilience. And when I had that resilience, then I could reintegrate into society and I could eat normal food and I would have this strength and healing. And that didn't happen for me at all, despite doing everything to the T, the, all the diets, the juice fasting, meditating, living like a monk for six to eight years. And at the end of it, I was terrified of food. I was terrified of sugar. I was having reactions to so many foods. I didn't have any more resilience. I had way less. My world was so small. I hadn't shared a meal with someone in so long. I never did anything or went out because if I made a plan, the chances are I'd have to cancel it and face that whole awkwardness again and, and de devastation and disappointment. So I was unable to work. I was living in my parents' spare room. I was suicidal. It was really tough. My world was so small. And I didn't have that resilience. I was scared of food. So this is why I have this training. This is what I teach my clients. And I'm going to teach you today my three-step process to overcoming food triggers and food intolerances. So step one is really where everything changed for me in my life was when I discovered the mind-body connection. And for me, that was really discovering the, the nervous system and how the nervous system is connected to every nerve fiber in your body. So your eyes, your skin, your stomach. So I had acne. If my nervous system is in a state of stress, then my skin is acidic and bacteria will grow. If my nervous system is in a state of stress, 
my digestion is not going to work. No matter how many expensive probiotics or digestive enzymes or bone broth or organic celery juice I put in my stomach, if my stomach is in a state of acidity and not working because of the stress, then I'm just burning money doing those practices. So step one is about deactivating the fear. And for me, part of deactivating the fear of my symptom was was when I realized that it was connected to my nervous system and that it wasn't all these foods causing the problem and that it was also something I could overcome. So prior to that moment of realization, I thought, This was my, it had been my life for decades and I thought it was going to be my life for the rest of my life. And that was really stressful. So if you imagine your symptom, let's use IBS for an example, is like an electrical circuit in your nervous system. It has a lot of energy in it and that energy is coming from different places. So you have the symptom and then you have the emotional response to the symptom because let's face it, it's, it's, It's stressful being in pain. It's stressful having a symptom like that. And then you have all the memories of when this symptom has taken you down in the past, how it stopped you from working. It stopped you going to your best friend's wedding. It caused trouble in relationships. And then you have all this, the emotional memories of the past. And you have the emotional concern about the future. How can I get through the day? How am I going to make it to work? Will I make it to pick up my kids? Will I be able to take care of myself in the future? Maybe it's your relationship. How can I save my marriage when this symptom is is causing so much disruption? So all of that is all this energy, right, is going into this symptom. And all the stories you've been told by doctors or other healthcare practitioners. This is a scary virus. It's a scary bacteria. It's incurable. You got to learn to live with this. There's no hope, whatever. So there's a lot of energy, right? Going into this symptom. So step one is about deactivating that. And for me learning that this is my nervous system, that eventually when I figure out a way to balance my nervous system, this is going to resolve that gave me a lot of relief. I can even feel it in my body now. And then educating myself on the mind-body connection. Okay, the symptom is not so scary anymore. That's chipping away at the symptom. This is step one. Now, I like to use a statement, a sentence, like this is just an overstimulated nervous system and I'm working on calming it down and also like to soothe myself when I say that. Hey, this is okay. It's not as bad as it has you thought it was. You know, it's now you have some new information. Things are going to change. Just like soothing, right? Because it's your nervous system. And doing that every time you get a symptom, every time you have a thought about your symptom, every time you have a anything. And my clients say to me, well, I'm going to be doing this 24-7 all the time. I'm like, yeah. You just do it over and over and over and over again. And this is going to start to chip away at that neural network that is your symptom. So whatever is going to help you to deactivate that stress, you do it over and over and over and over and over and over again. And you continue to chip away at that neural loop that is part of your symptom and your symptom is real. I used to get boils on my chin. I had acne. I was debilitated with widespread chronic pain. I was getting cramps. All kinds of real symptoms were happening and they were part of this neural loop. So chipping away at that is so important. And when I get to a point with my clients or when my clients get to the point where they start to tell me, hey, you know, the symptoms, they they were there on the weekend, maybe even a little worse, but I don't care as much. I was do- having fun. I was laughing. I was, I was whatever, right? This is a real point of celebration because 
like the great Dr. Schubiner says, the symptoms can be the last thing to go, but when you stop caring about them. And so that is when you've started to deactivate the fear and you've drained that symptom of a lot of energy. And good news, when you all that energy that has been keeping that symptom so alive, when that gets drained out, it goes into you, your life force energy, your healing energy, your your vitality, it goes to you. So you gain energy as the symptom begins to lose the energy. But the symptom does fight back. It does fight back because it's served a purpose. It's thinking it's kept you safe. It's been doing all these different things and it's 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 just familiar, right? So it, do, it can fight back, but you just keep chipping away at it, keep de- deactivating it. And over time, when you start to care less about it, that is a good sign. So step two, over all these years when you've had the symptom, you have collected a lot of evidence that yes, this food is dangerous. Yes, this symptom is a nightmare. Look at all the things it stopped you from doing in the past. Look at all the ways it's interfered with your life and relationships and finances. And yes, when I ate that food, I got acne yes when I ate that food I got cramps yes when I ate that food like there was just so much evidence already that this food is dangerous that this like that one plus one equals two so much evidence hard evidence right so the only way you're going to be able to override that evidence is to use your imagination and everyone's imagination is probably a bit different, but it's usually like colors and detail and feeling and emotion. Because when you remember the stressful past, you remember the devastation and the feeling of the pain, right? So you got to use your imagination to start to create some new experiences. So for me, I because I've been living like a health freak and a monk for so long, not sharing meals with people, spending time alone, eating special food. I really like had this idea that I wanted to be this easy breezy, cool chick who walks into a bar and orders fish and chips and a pint. And she is not thinking about anything except for the connection, the fun that is available to her, okay? And it's really important not to think about what you don't want in this because we're so used to thinking, well, I don't want the symptoms. I don't want to eat this and be in bed for a week. Like I have stuff to do. I have work to go to. I I just don't want to be in pain, right? It's so, it's natural for us to think what we don't want, but you really have to be strict with your imagination when you're doing this visualization practice that you think about what you do want and how that feels. So for me, I thought, wow, that would feel so cool to not even be thinking about food and the oil and the weed and the gluten and what time it was to be just like spontaneous, right? I'm I'm in a bar, friends, talking, laughing, connection, tasty food. I love vinegar. I love salt and vinegar chips, just eating this food and focused on something completely different. And I really just felt how like fun and free that would be. Like I have clients who tell me, you know, one client, she went to the park with her kids. Then she went to get ice cream. Then they called into their friends and she was like, I'm living this like spontaneous free life now. Whereas previously everything was so controlled, leave the house, come back, like planned, controlled, right? So it's very different feeling how it feels. And for me, it's the fish and chips in a bar, easy breezy. But for you, it can be anything, something totally different, something that would feel really great to you, like sharing an ice cream with someone, like smooshing it on their face and like licking it off their nose. Just just like it's just silly and it's fun and it's free. I remember in Bali, my Balinese neighbors who I completely adore shared with me some food and I just loved accepting their offering of generosity and love and that I I 
I have no idea what I was eating, but I didn't have to ask or feel anxious or run away afterwards. I was just able to be so present there with them. And I just felt they were giving me their love because they love me so much too, just like I loved them. So whatever it is, you tune into you in the future. Who is you in the future? This higher timeline. What does it feel like? And give it a title. So if I was doing this now, I would call my one easy breezy, right? And if you prefer to journal, you can write it down, write in the present tense. If you're just more feeling and visual, just give it a name. You can speak it out loud. Just say easy breezy and close your eyes and imagine being this, this person. What does it feel like? You know, what are you eating? What are you doing? You're not thinking about the symptoms, that's for sure. What are you thinking about? So don't focus on that you're not thinking about the symptoms. What are you thinking about? You're thinking about how creamy this is and how delicious it is. And like, how do they even get these flavors into this, these olives or whatever? So that is your visualization and you tune into that as often as you can. Just keep imagining her, keep imagining that person that you are in the future with a new freedom, a new spontaneity, a new resilience, a new confidence, a new joie de vie, whatever it is for you, just tune into that. And that is you exercising your imagination to create new evidence that, that you can live and eat and be in a new way. So the third step is now one and step one and two need to be accompanied with uh, accompanied with my meditation, my SOS meditation and workbook. So if you want to receive those, leave me a comment and I will send them over to you. DM me or leave me a comment in the in the comment section. You can say me, please, meditation, please. And I will send you this so you have the full package. And step three is broken beliefs and bad habits. So when you have these subconscious broken beliefs and bad habits, they are keeping your nervous system in a state of fight or flight. So you can go do all the perfect step one, step two, your imagination, deactivate your nervous system, all the brain training you want to do in the world. You can make your brain realize it's safe, this food is safe, it's all safe. But if you're not sorting out, addressing, healing, whatever you want to call it, these broken beliefs and bad habits, the lenses that you are seeing yourself and the world through, then you you will keep, continue to generate stress for yourself in your nervous system and you will continue to get symptoms. And the perfect example of this is me. Last week, I had bloating and gas and I was thinking, what's causing this? I know it's not the food, but, you know, I can... I'm going to be curious. I'm going to be open. So I was thinking maybe I'm eating too fast because that is a habit that I do want to change. I am in the habit of eating while I'm walking around, not sitting down and having proper meals. And I would really like to make my eating a more sacred, mindful practice for so many reasons and I thought well this must be this must be it I've been thinking about this for a while it must be that I'm eating too fast that I now have all this bloating and glass and gas and at the end of the week I was feeling a bit tired and I needed a restful day so I spent a day chilling with a really good friend and we were watching movies and chatting And while we were chatting, I opened up to her about something that was actually had been quite triggering for me in my personal life to do with someone else. 
And after we chatted and she really validated my experience and she really held that space for me. And I had some aha moments. The bloating went away. It literally went away. The bloating, the gas, it, it all went away. And the next day I saw this other person who was, I was getting just triggered by the, this experience with, and boom, the bloating came back, came back for about an hour or two. And then it resolved again, because now that I made the connection to this emotional, this bad habit and belief system, this combination of bad habits and belief systems that I have still in so many areas of my life that I'm always unfolding and opening up to. So staying curious about these bad habits and these broken beliefs and different parts of your life. Now, for me, the journaling about all my traumas and going into the past and trying to get them all out didn't work. It kept me stressed out. It made me hate my parents. It wasn't helping me resolve things and it was like re-triggering me. So I take a very different approach. But I just thought it was so genius of my body and the knowledge that I know now that when something is happening in my body, I I stay curious, I stay open, and I always look to these broken beliefs and bad habits. So if you feel like you have these parts of your life that you still have these broken beliefs and bad habits that are generating stress, that are generating symptoms in your body, then I highly recommend that you reach out to me reach out to somebody, a professional, a friend, and use these step one, step two, and step three all in combination so that you can start to grow in your life, get greater intimacy in your life, get greater joy and pleasure and fun in your life. And you can experience less of those symptoms that have been debilitating you and just allow your life to open up in so many ways. Moving from that closed, scared place in life that hard and fast to softening up and seeing where in your life you might grow. And if you would like to get in touch with me to talk more about that, then you can go to my website and you can book a free call, a free breakthrough call where we will be able to uncover what stressors are keeping you stuck, keeping you sick, and what you can do right now to change that for you. This self-healing journey is truly the most profound and adventurous journey I've ever been on. And I really wish you all the best with your self-healing. And if I can do anything to support you, please let me know.